In 2019, a young man posted on Discord to his friends that he had just killed four of his relatives. When doing so, he provided pictures. Back in the late 1980s, a married couple from Bangladesh, Maniraz Zaman and Mamatas Begum, immigrated into Canada. They had their eldest son, Minaz, in 1996. After that, they had another child, a daughter named Melissa, in 1998. This story, however, mainly revolves around the son. Minaz grew up into a normal young man in Markham, Ontario. A friend of his in high school described him as just an average Markham kid. A neighbor put him in an even more positive light, saying that he was the family's golden child. Part of that was likely due to the fact that Minaz had been studying engineering at York University in Toronto and doing a bang-up job. Or at least he told his family he was. In actuality, he dropped out after taking two semesters of an engineering program at Seneca College. Rather than opening up and admitting that he wasn't going to that university, he decided to string his family along even longer. Menaz had been keeping this lie up for a long time now. For years, he had been telling his family that he was leaving to go attend classes every day. In reality, he was just spending a lot of time online, on both games and Discord in particular, and going to the mall or to the gym whenever he really needed it to look like he was leaving and going somewhere. However, as it usually goes when stacking lies upon lies, those lies become a massive card castle that's going to collapse at some point, and that point was rapidly approaching. Manaz couldn't stay in college indefinitely, and his supposed graduation date was approaching. There was no way he was going to be able to keep this lie going any longer. Manaz began to formulate a plan. He needed to get out of this somehow. After thinking long and hard, he could only come up with one solution. He told his friends on Discord, I started skipping uni the first year I entered. It was for mechanical engineering. Believe me, if I could rewind time, I would, but after failing half my subjects, I had to repeat my courses. It is here in second semester I started getting depressed, became an atheist, and ultimately created this plan. So for three years I'd been telling my parents I go to uni when actually I was just hanging out at the mall four days a week. The mall is on the same route as my uni. I told my parents that my classes weren't that long, so I would just chill at the mall from 8am to 1pm while also going to the community gym. Menaz, as stated before, was fairly active on Discord. He mainly posted in a server called Perfect World Void, which mainly centered around players of the online multiplayer game called Perfect World. Menaz wasn't really the most popular user when it came to this server. He was known for being a bit of an asshole, in fact. He had quite a long history of rude and offensive messages, a lot of them being towards Muslim people despite being raised in a Muslim household himself. Menaz had even been banned at least one time in the past, eventually kind of weaseling his way back into the server somehow. Everything that Menaz said was obscenely fucking racist, said one of the members of the same server. On the 27th of July in 2019, Manaz decided that he was going to let the other users in on his little plan, simply telling them, Gonna kill my parents and go to jail, yo. Shortly after, he then shared a photo of a woman's corpse, adding, This is my mom. In the beginning, other users weren't really sure as to whether or not they should even believe him. I mean, he was known for being a less than stellar guy, but murder? It seemed a lot more likely that he probably just pulled the picture off of a website somewhere and was trolling them. But he continued on with his explanation. I did this because I didn't want my parents to feel the shame of having a son like me. I choose to kill them instead of me out of my cowardice. Due to me being an atheist, I believe that this is the only life we get. I know it might sound confusing, but what's done is done and what had been planned has been concluded. I'm sorry if this makes you upset. Please try and remember the good times, he said. That day, Manaz had killed more than just his mother. Unfortunately, he soon came across his grandmother and ended her life as well. He then sent the pictures of his grandmother next, further shocking the server. The other users on the server were flabbergasted. They didn't think any of this was real, but on the off chance that it was, they didn't even know anything about Manaz in reality. They didn't know his full name, any details about him, or even where he lived. Even if they were going to report this to the authorities, they didn't know what information to provide them, or even which country's authorities to contact in general. They didn't have much to go on. Several users of the Perfect World Void server started trying to take action in whatever way they could at the moment. They started trying to pull together any little bits of information that they could about the murderer in hopes that they could give the authorities at least 
something to go off of. If this was even real, that is. One user of the server, a man known only as John, was pretty convinced that Manaz was telling the truth in his messages. He, along with another user named Nicole, who actually studied criminal justice and had some knowledge of forensics, felt that the pictures were, at least, definitely real pictures of dead bodies. But were they pictures that Manaz had actually taken? That was the real question. They sent the pictures to some of their contacts so that they could use applications like TenEye and Google Images to reverse image search the photos and see if they were taken from any other previously existing website online, possibly some sort of shock site. If the pictures had already been available on some other website before this supposed murder had even taken place, that would be proof that he was lying. From what they could find though, or rather what they couldn't find, the pictures appeared to be original. Reverse image searches came up with nothing. They ran the pictures into some other databases as well, coming up with nothing again. There were no results which implied that he had just pulled them from some random website, Nicole said. They were probably taken by him. That's when it was like, this is the real deal, our friend is a mass murderer. People on that server came from all parts of the world. The USA, Romania, Egypt, Belgium, Israel, Costa Rica, you name it. Where Manaz actually lived wasn't obvious to any of them. One of them, a man in Texas, decided to just wing it and inform his local police of what had happened. They, frankly, didn't believe him and didn't take him seriously. The members of the server began to live in fear that, if they didn't do something, he may kill again. This was when another member of the server, a guy who went by Junior from Costa Rica, said that he felt that he had gotten to know Manaz better than anyone else in the group ever had. He felt that if anyone were to be able to get in contact with him, it would probably be him. He started trying to get a hold of Manaz, spamming him with messages until he finally responded. The reply he got simply stated, This may upset you, but I did it. It seemed that Manaz was planning on turning himself in, but it just wasn't happening. Are you turning yourself in? Yes, of course. I deserve punishment. Wish you talked it out before doing it. It's been my plan for three years. Literally told my parents my uni graduation was July 28th. I couldn't have delayed it any longer. Should have talked it out with them, dude. This act was truly selfish. I agree. He then threatened to kill his father and his sister next. They still weren't any closer to coming up with his full name or his location, though. Looking at his past messages and judging by the timing of certain things he said, they were able to figure out that he was, most likely, at least from the Eastern Time Zone in North America. They were able to find his IP address, which seemed to be from a location in Toronto, but that only narrowed things down somewhat, and it was always possible that he was using a VPN in the end. Then, after a while, Manaz simply hopped back onto the game and started playing. This was when one of the admins was able to trace his IP address more precisely and come up with a more accurate location. After that, they were actually able to narrow down the location to a specific building out in Toronto. The user found the phone number for the landlord of the building, hoping they might be able to contact them and find out what Manaz's room number was. But unfortunately, that phone number didn't go back to his landlord, it went to the internet provider itself. It seemed that they had run into yet another roadblock on their search. And unfortunately, they were too late. Manaz hopped back on and sent another picture to the server, this time revealing that he had killed his sister. He told the group that he'd be doing the same to his father when he came home in an hour. Hoping to save at least one person in this family, the group kept doing what they could to notify the authorities. One member of the server called their local police out in Minnesota, who this time were more cooperative. They were able to patch them over to the Toronto Police Department, who immediately filed an emergency request with Discord to get any identifying information about Manaz that they could. The police got the IP, got into contact with the ISP, and then finally obtained the actual address registered with Manaz's account. The story kind of varies a little here depending on which member of the server you ask. Some assert that Manaz was actually caught because he asked someone for money over PayPal, which allowed them to see his past transactions and even his address, which they handed over to the police. Maybe one of these accounts is true, maybe they both are. Either way, the police ended up with his address. The police officers soon rushed out to the address, a home on Castlemore Avenue out in Markham, which was a city about 18 miles from Toronto that night. However, they were too late. Inside the home, they found the bodies of Mamatas Begum, the mother, Firoza Begum, the grandmother, Malesa Zaman, the sister, 
and unfortunately they didn't make it in time finding the body of the father, Maniru Zaman, as well. I've just slaughtered my entire family and will most likely spend life in jail if I manage to survive. I hope I made you laugh at one point and another. I hope you remember the good times. I will miss you all. Minaz hopped online, telling the server, Police are here. Goodbye. Once the police showed up, Minaz came to the front door himself. The police went inside, seeing the horrific scene themselves. Reports began coming out for all to see. The York Regional Police stated that a 23-year-old man had been arrested and charged with four counts of first-degree murder after an almost entire family had been found slain in their Markham home the previous Sunday. One woman, who had been renting out a basement at the home in which all of this happened, reacted as you might expect, with shock. She said that she had nothing but positive interactions with the murderer over years and years up until this point. Surprised. I was surprised about Menhaz. He was such a nice guy. He was such a sweetheart. He would help me. He was very helpful for me for whole six years. The investigators hoped that some witnesses, or anyone with any information really, would come forward to help explain what all had happened here. But it didn't matter in the end, as Minaz himself told a detective what had happened, saying, Four of my family members are dead because of me. And I just killed them. He did, however, refuse to discuss the motive with them, leaving them perplexed and confused in the end. The police sent the bodies into the coroner to be identified, which they noted could take some time. Soon after, Manaz appeared in a new market court after having been in police custody for some time. The court were told that the murders had happened the night before the bodies were found. The autopsies had come back showing that all four of the deceased had been hit over the head with some sort of object, likely a crowbar, that caused severe blunt force damage. Afterwards, their throats had been cut. One of the pictures Minaz had sent to the server had actually been a picture of him holding said knife that was used to perform the executions. Once it came to court, Minaz came clean. He stated that he had killed his whole family because they were going to find out that he had been lying for years about going to university and becoming an engineer. In October of 2020, at a hearing about the sentencing, Minaz told the court, I would like to just apologize to anyone I have impacted negatively with my actions especially to the people who knew my family, friends and loved ones who I know could have never seen something like this from me happening. I am sorry. The lawyer submitted a joint recommendation that Minaj should serve life in prison with an eligibility for parole in 25 years for the murder of three of the family members. He further stated that the murder of Mamataz, uh, the first killing of the mother, was somewhat more ambiguous, with there being issues in determining how planned and deliberate it actually was. For this one murder, he recommended 15 years before parole eligibility. Manas pled guilty to all four counts of murder. He was then sentenced to life in prison with no chance of parole for 40 years. The best friend of Malisa, Manaz's sister, told the court, I never thought I would have to write a victim impact statement for my best friend's murder. I never thought she would be taken away from me like this. I thought the only time I would write a speech for her would be on her wedding day at some point in the future, but I guess that's off the table now. I fear seeing Minaz. I fear seeing what he may do as a free man. I have panicked several times in public since he committed the murder in fear of seeing him or when I see anyone who I think looks like him. I fear this pain and anxiety will never leave me. In the end, Manaz won't be getting parole until he's 65 years old at the youngest. If he ever even does get out, he'll have to submit his DNA to a national registry, and he won't be allowed to own any form of weapon for at least 10 years. We'll see someday if all of that even comes to pass. Check back with the channel in 40 years. Once again, thank you for watching my video. I always appreciate it. I've been doing a lot of these videos lately that are kind of centered around social media, like uh, videos about YouTubers, Redditors, uh, Discord users, because I think it's always kind of interesting when you can see what the murderer actually had said, and it was fairly recent, and you can, I, I don't know, it's just a good way to kind of peer into the mind of what they were really doing. That was not scripted, if you couldn't tell. If you want to give the video a like, I really appreciate it. It helps out with the algorithm. Uh, commenting does too, I guess. If you like content like this, feel free to subscribe, because I talk about it quite a bit. If you don't mind, go ahead and follow me on social media as well. I mean, if anything would ever happen to the channel, that would probably be the only way you'd ever hear about it. If you want to support the channel even further, I do have a Patreon account, which I keep linked down in the description below. And speaking of which, shout out to the top patrons. So we've got, and here we go with this one again.
Then we've got Steph and Jamie Kramer, Max Swordguy, L, Rain Noir, L Palmieri, Pao Yang, Alice Malice Tentacles, April Diamond, Starfade, Astral, Grack, Angie, Rick of Work in Progress USA, Sash Johnson, Marianne McCurdy, Buttery Frankus, Wafrans, Jules Latona, Arctic Cat, Alan Damiani, Marsh, Rinsenstein, Kim Peek, Lux Alpaca, Charity, Scoochie Maine, Jackie, and Mark Barnett. You are all fantastic. This has been your host, Kyle. Thank you, and good night.